Joe Rogan is the host of the Joe Rogan Experience, the most popular podcast in the world, who has on guests who have different expertise and different ideologies. One of his guests who he had on his podcast was a political commentator named Dave Rubin, who at the time had left the liberal online news network, The Young Turks. But after that, he is leaving the network. For, uh, he's got a great new job at Riot.org. And started his own show on Aura TV, which with the help of Sam Harris's appearance on his show, had kicked off. On October 26th of 2015, Dave Rubin appeared on the Joe Rogan Experience for episode number 713, in which he spoke to Joe Rogan for over three hours. The most notable piece of this long interview was Dave Rubin explaining to Joe Rogan his disdain for his former boss at the Young Turks, Cenk Uger. He voiced his displeasure with Cenk Uger's debate with Sam Harris over the varying degree of harm that Islam brings compared to other religions, of which Rubin states that Cenk Uger was being, quote, dishonest. Joe Rogan also nods in agreement and gives his opinion on this, stating that indeed he believed that Cenk Uger was being dishonest, and that Sam Harris was on another level from him. He also stated that Uger was just trying to win, and that despite being a former guest on the podcast, he had basically lost all of his respect for Uger. What is it with Cenk? What, I mean, you, you know him. I, that, that was really perplexing to me because I usually feel like whether I agree with him or don't agree with him, opinion, he thinks about it, he talks about it, he tries to be open-minded, he's passionate about these ideas, but with that, it was so confusing to me because it was almost like he was just trying to win. And I think that Cenk is not at the same level as Sam when, they come, when it comes to debating these ideas. You have to understand the time frame that this happened in. This was in the 2015-2016 time, the rise of Donald Trump, and the online internet culture becoming full of anti-SJW content and positions. It became mainstream on YouTube and online platforms to be an anti-social justice warrior, and in this situation, Dave Rubin was viewed as the anti-SJW, and Joe Rogan was also in agreement with this, falling into the mainstream beliefs that were held on YouTube and social media. Dave Rubin would then appear once again on November 7th, 2016, the day before Donald Trump was elected, and they would talk about things like gender pronouns pronouns like right. uh, uh, the, a guy who becomes a woman wants to use he or, or wants to use she or her right so it's not them it's just nonsense this weird marxism thing that's going on it's this very strange leftist bullying it, that it, is it's it's so deranged then on may 8th 2018 the formation of the quote intellectual dark web would be made which included both rogan and rubin their union and friendship seemed to continue to cement, and there seemed to be no problems. But very soon, that would drastically change. Less than a month later, on May 31st, 2018, a rising star in the Republican Party named Candace Owens would appear on the Joe Rogan podcast. In this podcast, Owens would completely expose herself as a fraud and completely lacking any intelligence. In this episode, she would argue that climate change isn't real. You don't I thought, think we have to care about the environment? Like, what no, do you no, not even a little bit. Like, no. Not even a little bit? No. Do you, okay, let me, let me clarify this. I don't throw trash on the ground. Do I believe in climate change? No. Stating that she doesn't trust dot .com's information, but then responding that she doesn't believe any of the dot .org information on scientists' agreement on the existence of climate change that Rogan brought up during the podcast. 7% of scientists said that human activity is driving global warming, yet only half the American public, public ascribed to that view. So, well, what website is 87, this? 87, this is... Scientific American. Yeah. Yeah, dot .com, though. Like, cause it, that, that means it's, it's making money. I don't trust that. If it was a dot .org, I would probably take that, but that this is just a random website. Site and well, I, I don't Scientific trust American is not necessarily a random website. It's yeah, I don't. I don't believe this like at all. Just so you know, you don't believe it like at all. <laughs> I, <laughs> I genuinely, I genuinely don't believe. It. I know you do, but I genuinely well, don't believe it. I like, believe modern scientists. Yeah, work. they almost. It's it's a pretty broad right. consensus. Who do they? Yeah, who do who are they? Um, polling. Is it the people Scientists? that are a part of this dot, <laughs> That's this dot org? That's what I'm asking. I Ten thousand numbers can three hundred and six be... scientists to confirm over ninety seven percent of climate scientists agree, 
and over 97% of the scientific articles yeah. find that global warming is real and largely caused by humans. Personally, but, don't believe it. That's okay. But why? It's, it's good but, to start at a place of thing. not believing something. But, no, it's not. This was the beginning of the end for Dave Rubin. Candace Owens was heavily sponsored by Dave Rubin, and the beginnings of the newfound belief that, hey, maybe these people don't know what they're talking about and are just moron grifters was starting to form in Joe Rogan's brain. Shortly after having on Candace Owens, Rogan then had on Rubin for the third time on his podcast on June 13th. In this podcast episode, they would both get into back and forths about regulations, specifically talking about building codes, to which Rubin stated that the free market makes regulation unnecessary because every worker wants good Yelp scores, and that will make it so they don't cut any corners. But Joe Rogan's father was an architect, and he has a personal familiarity with the subject, and is aware of the corner cutting that happens, and the requirement for regulations when it comes to building. This set off Rogan, who would explain to Rubin that you need pollution regulations and building code regulations. Right now, right? Do you want the government to tell you how to do all these things and all the regulations that you got to have your electric thing this far from this and like all well, the, the regulations like that for construction are important though. You do have to make sure that people don't do stupid shit. But make but sure generally, you don't have a power line near a water line. There's though they want to build things that are good. Now I get it. Oh, I get, that's not true. Listen, people. No, cut, no, people are going to build corners all the time. Like you have to have regulations when it comes to construction methods, they, or people are going to get fucked. They cut corners when there are regulations anyway. They do. They would cut a lot more if there weren't regulations. I'm not totally... If you go to third world countries and look at construction methods, they're fucking dangerous. Yeah. That's why schools collapse on kids in foreign countries sometimes. Like, Well, you, I'm not complete... I'm not telling you that I'm against all regulation, period. Intellectually, I like that argument because you could make a... I think you can make a very sound argument that competition would force people to do better work. Like if you're a plumber, you have a vested interest in doing the best plumbing job you can, rate you on Yelp so that you will get more work. Up and short things and do things terrible. They're not thinking logically. But they're I don't like think it's the shitheads. government. I don't think it's the government that they're like, ah, the government gave me this regulation, so that's why I'm gonna do it right. Well, if you they didn't I mean? have any regulations, there'd be no incentive whatsoever to do it right. No, there. Listen, man, I was in no. construction my whole life. My dad was an architect. Yeah. I've been in construction since I was a little kid. You fucking need regulations. These guys, a lot of people that are in construction, they're, they'll do whatever the fuck they can to make money. And it's not good for the people that have the house. They might have that house for five, ten years before that problem manifests itself. The, the people who are establishing these codes are licensed builders or people that have been involved in construction for a long fucking time and they know what's safe and what's not safe. That's why those codes exist, to protect the consumers. You can't just protect the consumers through the marketplace because so it I'm takes not a long for time for these problems to become a real issue and these problems could potentially damage everybody in the neighborhood. Like Absolutely. You have to be real careful with construction. I get it. And, uh, you know, my dad wasn't in construction, so I'm not privy to like all of that. I genuinely believe that as a general level, people have a vested interest in, especially now because of phones and apps and Yelp and all the mm -hmm. things, doing good work because that's how you will get more work. It not only that, but they would also get into a back and forth over the U.S. Postal Service, which Rogan is fond of, but Rubin says is completely unnecessary, stating that prices would go down because, quote, competition would start kicking in. Do they do the post office well? No. What, like, what do they do well? They do the post office pretty good, actually. But guess what? If the post office <laughs> closed tomorrow, it would be all right. You'd still get mail. Get, would Amazon suck. would pick. No, it wouldn't. Amazon would, would pick that up. send things through UPS. It would cost a lot more. It wouldn't, though. Competition would start kicking in and between UPS and FedEx and Amazon and drones and blah, 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 mm -hmm. and DHL. They'd all start. It would probably drop prices mm -hmm. because right now we've just got this artificial thing that sits there that then allows them to price according to that. But if you drop that. Another overlooked piece of this podcast episode was the portion in which Rubin claims that Candace Owens can be more influential than Kanye West in the changing of political beliefs of African Americans, to which Rogan hilariously inquires, are you high? She's causing a massive rift in the black community. Black male support for Trump, or for Trump doubled. It was at 11%, it's now at 22. No, well, it's Kanye. Kanye was the wrecking machine, but right. I actually think, I think in the grand scheme of things, Candace is much bigger. I really believe that in terms Why? of- Why? Because I think she could be a direct line to all of the political parts of this if she decides How to so? go that route. <laughs> I think she could run for Senate or- What? Yeah, yeah. 
Are I, you I, okay? You high? Yeah. Did you get high I'm not before high. You got here? I'm not high what today. Happened? I'm not. I'm only smoking maybe once a week on Sundays. And now, only now on I'm on tour, so I'm not really at all. But. Maybe I'll spark up a joint and have you reconsider what you <laughs> just said. <laughs> I'd even say I think she's good. I think she could have a bigger effect even than Kanye when it comes to just everything going on politically and I'm socially. I'm going to ask you again if you're this, high and I need this you to be girl, honest with me. She wants it. She wants <laughs> it, man. I'm sure she does, but when you she's hear- She's affecting people in a big way. Mm. I, I think maybe- They also get into an awkward back and forth here. As Rogan doesn't want to outright state that Candace Owens is an idiot, but Ruben is trying to get a straightforward answer from him, and this was the deep downfall that Rogan had hit. After seeing Candace Owens on his podcast speaking completely unintelligibly about climate change, and Ruben claiming that regulations for buildings are unnecessary, he seemed to have an epiphany. Yeah, reconsider. You said you watched the podcast I did with her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I watched. I don't know, maybe at least at least an hour and a half of it or so. Okay. Yeah. Why? Why what? Well, I don't know. Why are you saying it that way? Because I don't think she should run for Senate. No, no, I'm not saying... I think she's a, a young girl with some interesting ideas, and she's got a lot of passion. No, no, I didn't say you... she's real fun. Left-wing online media had a complete field day with both the appearances of Candace Owens and Dave Rubin on The Rogan Experience. Kyle Kalinske of Secular Talk released multiple videos stating that Candace Owens has no idea what she's talking about and responding to Dave Rubin's arguments about iPhone videos and Yelp covering for regulations. Liberal host David Pakman, who would be someone who appeared on the Rogan podcast now twice, reacted to the appearance, stating that it was quite embarrassing. I only saw a little bit, um, and what I saw was really bad, okay? Really bad example. And then number two, it was a, port, a section about the government not being good at doing things, and he used some example about UPS, USPS, and shipping live baby chickens, and it, it was just a total implosion. I mean, just absolute total implosion. And he was all sweaty during it, and I don't know if he was sweaty because it, he was getting nervous at how bad the implosion was, or maybe Joe Rogan keeps the studio really hot. But it was it was not good. It was it was not not a good uh, not a good thing. But it was the majority report that would have the most popular videos reacting to Rubin's meltdown. The majority report uploaded three videos titled "Dave Rubin's Nonsense Brings Joe Rogan's Show to a Screeching Halt," which gained 466,000 views. Another titled "Joe Rogan Humiliates Dave Rubin in Logic Chokehold," which gained over 538,000 views, and another titled "Libertarianism May Never Recover from Dave Rubin's Epic Stupidity," which gained 350,000 views. But the person most affected by this was Joe Rogan himself as he would later on in November of 2018 state that there are people that he does not believe who flipped their entire philosophy and all of their opinions in just a matter of two years. He lambasts them for crying about being attacked by leftists. And it's quite clear that he was talking about Dave Rubin and Candace Owens. And that this is possible that people can realize that there's some, some stupidity to this uh, team mentality that we have right. this right versus left which is almost all a, a good percentage of it is these assumed identities right these uh these predetermined patterns that get adopted in order to as we first started talking about this in, in order to establish yourself as someone who's in a group right you you get accepted by this group and you see it left and right. I mean, I don't want to name any names, but there's a bunch of people that do it blatantly. You see them. And I've even seen them switch teams. And you see them switch teams. And I don't, I don't buy their rationalizations when it comes to ideology. What I think is what they're doing is they're switching teams because they realize there's an in on this team. Right. And they can just say, this is the problem with the team I used to be on. Those fucking losers. And they're, they're really Benedict Arnold. Right. And like, like they probably have as much of an affinity to the ideas of one side as they do to the other side. They just go all in on one side to get acceptance from the group. Right. You just no way people change their opinion that much over two years or something like that. Or, you know, it's like they just decide this group makes more sense now. And I've been attacked by people on the left, so I'm going to go to the right or vice versa. And usually what it is is. I mean, when, even when they say they've been attacked, like, oh, you fucking baby, there's 300 million people just in this country alone. If you put something out there publicly and a thousand people attack you, don't act like you're being persecuted, okay? You have an idea, you've, you've, you've launched that idea out into the zeitgeist, and people took a big shit on it. You know, whether it's people on the right or people on the left, you got to be able to argue your point one way or the other and not just immediately jump ship when someone who shares ideas with you decides that your idea sucks. And maybe they're wrong, and maybe you're right. But you got to argue that through. But this idea of 
these partisan patterns that people just seem to automatically fall into. They're so detrimental to dialogue. In early 2019, Dave Rubin would do an interview with Tim Pool, who asked him about the building codes incident on Joe Rogan's podcast. And Rubin explains that he did not expect to get into a heated back and forth with Rogan about it, and said that he, quotes, likes talking about ideas. About uh, three times. So there, there was one particular incident where uh, Rogan was asking you about why you believe in less government control. Yeah. People felt like you didn't know what you were talking about, that you were advocating for a position, that you weren't... No, so this was, uh, I think specifically, this is the last time I was on Rogan, and it was, we were talking about building codes, I think was the right. specific part of it, yeah. Oh, you've been dragged And I kept, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, I, we were talking, well, it was in the framework of talking about limited government. And I said at the beginning of this, this is not like my particular point of interest, like building codes or even regulation specifically, like the nitty gritty parts of regulation. Uh, I like talking about ideas. That's what I like talking about. Yeah. So like we got into some nitty gritty thing about, um, about building code regulation. And I said something like you could have private regulation for some of this and that you'd have an agreement between the buyer of the house and the seller of the house, that maybe that's not exactly the role for government. But several times in that, I said, if you want to talk to somebody who really knows this better than I do, I said, talk to Yaron Brook from the Ayn Rand Institute. Yeah. And these guys are more radical libertarians, let's say. They, they, they call themselves objectivists, but they're radical libertarians. Right. And I kept saying, this is not really a position I have, but I thought we were just having sort of like a fun uh, it, it intellectual like exercise. Criticism, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, because I saw the usual suspects just tweeting it at me all day long. And it's like, I, you know, all right. You know, it's funny. I had dinner with Joe, I think that night or maybe two nights after was that. You ever saw that picture of me and Sam and Joe and a whole bunch of us at dinner? Yeah, all yeah. These huge so and I said to Joe, I was like, oh, I'm getting some heat for that. And he's like, he's like, who cares? Like, who cares? Like, why would you care? And I was like, oh, yeah, why would I care? Then in October of 2019, leftist political commentator Kyle Kalinske, the host of Secular Talk, would appear on Joe Rogan's podcast. And in the podcast, Joe Rogan would make fun of the, quote, classical liberals, saying that most people don't even know what that means. This clearly was a shot at Dave Rubin and his ilk. I net because and then people like to get sneaky and use, no, I'm a classic liberal. Yeah, because oh, it's... Oh, what is that? What is that? Exactly. You're a fucking Republican. They call it classical liberal is a very... It's it's a it's a misleading term. It's one of those where I hear people say that and I go, well, that guy's Republican. Why is he calling himself a classical liberal? On May 19th of 2020, Joe Rogan had Patton Oswalt on his podcast, and he actually references the, quote, dumb libertarian argument he had with Dave Rubin without mentioning his name after Patton brings up building regulations being necessary. Another clear shot at Dave. It's very yeah, important. I mean, again, visit any third world country after an earthquake and look at all the crumbled buildings with no rebar and go, do you really want no building inspectors and no regulations <laughs> exactly. on it? Like, is that what you're fighting exactly. for? Because It'll all fucking crumble. Dude, you know? I've had that so, argument with people, that stupid libertarian argument. I'm like, look, my dad's an architect. My stepfather's an architect. I grew up on construction yeah. sites. You have yeah. to have inspectors. If you don't have inspectors, man, you're fucked. <laughs> like, these guys are, these, there's a lot of dirtbags out there making houses. They're bad yeah. people. They're, they're cutting <laughs> really? corners and stealing money and watering down the cement. Like, the fuck out of here. You can't, can't let the market decide. It takes too long, yeah. too. If you buy a house, it takes years before it starts fucking up if they do a shitty job. Yeah. It's like two years plus, in. The inspectors are there to protect the people that are actually doing it correctly because a lot of times the people doing it correctly have got to go to subcontractors yeah. and subcontractors supply stuff. And those people can be sketchy. So if you don't have the inspector come by going, oh, this dude just ripped you off with substandard cement oh, fuck see because i have that guy's got 900 things he's got to do every day yeah so you need the guy in there checking stuff out going just doing it so that your shit doesn't collapse on you coming full circle in the summer of 2020 dave rubin did a q a on his channel the rubin report and told his viewers that he has reached out tons of times to joe rogan to go on to his podcast to promote his newly released book but that rogan has not even responded once Ruben even acknowledges just how odd this is for him to even say to the public. Another sign that Rogan has completely discarded of Dave Rubin. Will I go on Rogan's podcast? I asked him and our PR people asked him uh, about a bajillion times to go on for my book. We did not get a response as far as I know, so I don't know what happened there. It's a little weird for me to say that publicly. I don't know what happened. Uh it is very interesting to see the contrast that just a couple of years can make. At the start, 
Rogan looked at Ruben as someone necessary to fight against the crazy lefties, but now looks at Ruben as just a hack, a grifter, and a fraud who makes dumb libertarian arguments about not needing building code regulations. It is also simply fascinating to look at how Joe Rogan focused on the anti-SJW content in 2015 and 2016, but slowly in the following years started having on people like Kyle Kalinske, Jimmy Dore, David Pakman, and likely Sam Cedar or Michael Brooks at some point in the future. He went from talking bad about leftists all the time, to then debating Dan Crenshaw on healthcare and advocating for Medicare for all. It is truly quite an interesting shift that Joe Rogan has made over recent times. Did you enjoy today's recapped episode? If you did, make sure to support the show on Patreon.com slash The Progressive Voice because these recapped videos are sponsored directly by my patrons that you can see on screen. And I want to give a big thank you to Brian Frederick, Jinx the Clown, Luis Blanca, Javier Berjón, Kyle Losell, Juan Vasquez, Scoops425. I also want to give a special thank you to Chasesta, Fadi Antun, Dean Rodman, Gavin Borden, and an extra, extra, extra special thank you to Arnold Castro. So please go and support the Patreon page if you would like to see me continue to make these recap videos due to demonetization from YouTube. This is often the only way to make any money off of these videos. So please go to patreon.com slash the progressive voice and make sure to support the show.